So don't tell me you ain't got it or you can't do something Yeah, everybody's spitting but they ain't saying nothing I'm just trying to make a difference, give you something to think about I ain't worried about a status or some goddamn clout If you see me in the streets, don't be afraid to shout them But I'm out Yo, 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 yo What's up? What's good with all my bull lifers out there, man? Hey, yo training camp is coming up what september 24th for the chicago bulls so it'll be media day and all that so we'll definitely be coming up on the nba season real real soon so this nba off season is coming to an end so i'm just getting super super happy the more and more the days go by plus I want to say thank you guys. I, I, I'm, I've been re getting really good reviews about the new intro and all that. I just felt the need to switch it up. You know, I, I had the radical creator, the regular, like, you know, just digital photo or whatever for a little minute. So I felt it was time to like in invest into a better intro. And I as I continue to do these videos and I will continue to enhance more and more things because I'm having fun doing this. So I, I, I just want to grow, you know what I'm saying? I, I just want to grow with it. But anyway, enough of my rambling. Let's get into the reason that you guys are here and that's for the Chicago Bulls news. Now, the first topic that we're gonna get into to is the Bulls brung in small fort Jakar Sampson. Now, we all know Jakar Sampson, all, all of us Bulls fans, we know Jakar Sampson from being dunked on by Zach Levine. And Levine trying, or rather uh, Temple trying to talk to Rodney Mock, which is ignoring him. Levine, he goes right by. Oh! Stop it, Sampson! Did you not get the memo? He didn't wow. come for the massage, he came for the facial. Oh my goodness. Woo! He pounded that down. I didn't think he was going to get there, Neil. I thought Sampson had the angle on him, but oh my goodness. Watch this. Oh, why, Sampson? Why? And then committed the foul. I think he didn't remember Zach Levine was a dunk. <laughs> Or at least that's all that I know about him, right? But Jakar Sampson is a 6'9", 214-pound small forward. Now, when I watch him play, he looks more like a, a, a power forward to me. He looks like he would be more of a four. I guess he could play some three or something like that. I don't know. But when I watch him, he doesn't handle the, vo the ball very much. And he looks like a straight up like rebounder and slasher. And, and he doesn't like have too many good moves with the basketball from what I've seen. Now, I haven't watched tons of tape of Jakar, but the Bulls are bringing him in, you know, on a training camp deal. I guess they want to see what what he can do maybe for defensive purposes or something like that, because we all know that the Bulls definitely need some help on the defensive end. But I feel like going and getting like a, uh, a power four is a bit redundant because of all the power fours that we have on this team right now. I, I actually, I know that they're gonna be playing Jabari Parker at the three a lot, but I actually see him moving over to the four sometimes too. I feel like he's gonna be a tweener. He's gonna be playing some three and four. Uh, you also have Bobby Portis, obviously, uh, Lori Marketing, you know what I mean? Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. actually can play a little bit of four as well. So I, I, I definitely don't think that we need any more fours on this team, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what they're doing, but maybe he actually can play the three and uh, there's something that I'm just not seeing. But anyway, Jakar, he isn't that exciting of a player because I don't know, his, his stats are pretty mediocre to say the least. Uh, during his time last season with the uh, Sacramento Kings, Jakar put up 4.7 points per game, 3.5 rebounds and one block in a total of 15 minutes per game. And he played about 22 games total. He had a stint with the Philadelphia 76ers and I believe he was released by them or he got traded and he got picked up by the Denver Nuggets. And on both of those teams, he basically, he averaged the same amount of points with Philly. He averaged 5.1 points per game, and he played a total of seven, uh, 47 games with them. And this was the year 15, 16. And during that same year, he uh, averaged 5.2 points per game when he got picked up by the Denver Nuggets, which he played a total of 26 games for them. 
and uh, he had averages of uh, 18 minutes per game with the Denver Nuggets and 14 with Philadelphia. So uh, Jakar Sampson, he's not a productive player to say the least, you know what I mean? And when I watch him, he looks like an energy player. He looks like a player that's, you know, gonna die for a couple loose balls and maybe he'll catch a few rebounds here and there, but he's nothing to get excited about, excited about at all. So uh, I think that he will not be around. Like, they will not sign him. I don't see him getting out of training camp, but hey, crazier things have happened with the Bulls, so who knows? But all right, let's move on to the next topic, man. The next guy we have to talk about is Kaiser Gates. So the Bulls brought him in for a training camp deal as well. Now with Kaiser Gates, he, he played college ball for Xavier, and during his stint there, he actually played from his freshman to his junior season, and during his junior season at Xavier, he averaged 7.2 points per game, uh, 4.6 rebounds per game, on 37% shooting from three, on 4.2 attempts a game. So he's not necessarily a player who is that dope either, but if you all remember, uh, just this past Bulls Summer League, he actually played on that Summer League team for the Bulls, and he didn't get he didn't get much tick, you know what I mean? But during the time he was able to get in the game, he was basically a stretch four. Kaiser Gates is a 6'9 power forward, and there you go again with the power forwards, which, I, I like I said, is pretty redundant. I don't think that the Bulls need another power forward. If anything, they should be stock stocking up on more wings, but this is Garn Pack, so they're doing their thing. So. I don't know what they're thinking, but anyway, it's who they brought in for training camp. So, as I said, he played with the Bulls summer G League team, and he averaged 6.7 points per game, uh, 1.7 rebounds per game on 40% shooting from three, but he only attempted 16, 15 shots. So, you know what I mean? Very, very small sample size. I think that they saw something in him. Uh, the, the couple games that I did see him play, uh, this past summer with the Bulls G League team, I saw that he had a pretty nice stroke, but that was basically the biggest thing that I saw from Kaiser. So I don't I don't know what to think out of uh, Kaiser Gates, just because uh, this would basically be his first year in the league as well. He went undrafted out of Xavier, so I don't know. I don't think that we should expect much out of him. Either though, I, I don't see the Bulls bringing him in. I don't see them signing him to a contract or anything like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, he'll he'll just be another body for the Bulls to practice with, you know, during during training camp. So uh, I don't know, but for his sake, maybe he can come in and ball out. But I I, I just don't see it. <laughs> but all right, anyway, let's move on to the next topic now. With this one. I want to talk about Dwayne Wade. Now, we all know that Dwayne Wade played for the Bulls, you know, back in what, 2017 with Jimmy Butler and all that. But this year, you know, he was playing with the Miami Heat and basically he's deciding whether he wants to stay in the NBA or not. And I actually read a report today stating that he is going to come back for one more season with the Miami Heat, but I only cared to talk about this is because he's actually coming back to the UC on November 23rd, 2018, and also on January 19th in 2019. Now, the question that I pose to you guys is, do you think that Dwayne Wade should get a tribute? <laughs> Obviously, it's a rhetorical question, but D-Wade coming to Chicago was basically a money grab for him, if you ask me. I don't know anybody from Chicago that felt like Dwayne Wade was actually a positive pickup for the team just because he came here and he basically uh, split the team up, if you ask me. He was actually a hindrance. He didn't help us in any way. He averaged he averaged like 18 points per game, but he was a very sucky defender. He was a horrible leader. You know what I mean? He didn't get along with the players besides Jimmy Butler. And I don't know, he just seemed like a bit of a diva, if you ask me. It was a big money grab for Dwayne Wade. So 
Uh, the real question, I guess, is what do you think the reception will be for Dwayne Wade coming back to the United Center uh, this coming season? <laughs> I wonder if he'll get booed or whatever the case may be. If I'm at the game, then I probably will boo D Wade just because he sucked when he was here, man. Now I get that he did a lot of off the court stuff and everything like that. That was that was dope. Always is, but. For this Chicago Bulls team, I, I hated that he was brought here. I, I absolutely hated that D-Wade was here. Dwayne Wade, man, you're bogus for what you came to the city and did, basketball-wise. You know what I'm saying? Basketball-wise, you came to Chicago and basically stole money from us. You know what I'm saying? Without a piece, without a mask, all of that. Dwayne Wade just robbed us blind. Huh. But... Anyway, I just felt like talking about that real quick. Lastly on, uh, I think it was, I, I don't know, it was some Chicago blog. I don't want to just blur anyone out there just because I don't remember it exactly. But I saw them pose the question of who should be the Bulls primary backup point guard behind Chris Dunn. Now, this one got me to thinking because they only brought up Ryan Archie Diacono and Cameron Payne. But I wanna throw another player into the mix, and that's Derek Walton Jr. Now, watching Derek Walton Jr., I actually liked what I saw out of him in, uh, while he was with the Miami Heat when he was playing for their G League team just you know, this past summer. He, I, I did a video on him before where he put up a nice amount of uh, points per game and all that. I think he averaged like 16 points per game for the Miami Heat's G League team. And he actually was a really good distributor. Now, I uh, listened to a few podcasts and everything like that. A lot of people aren't even thinking about Derek Walton Jr. You know, they're basically undermining him. And I believe like he's basically a training camp contract too. He has a training camp contract. He's not necessarily signed to the Chicago Bulls. That contract isn't guaranteed. So it was just a training camp contract. But when I watch Derek Walton Jr. play, I really like what I see from him. When I see him play, it looks like he doesn't make too many mistakes with the ball. You know what I mean? His turnovers aren't super high. I believe it was below two per game during his G League stint with the Miami Heat this past summer. Plus his assists were pretty nice at around four and a half, five assists per game. You know what I mean? Plus he's a really good three point shooter as well. And just given the eye test, I really liked what I saw from him basketball wise. He's a pretty quick player out there. You know, uh, he has vision on the court. He was hitting the, the open man a lot of the times. Um, and his stroke is really, really nice. Plus he actually plays with some hunger. You know what I mean? When you watch him play out there, he actually looks like a really uh, energized player. He actually looks like he wants it. You know what I mean? He's not laid back or anything like that. He has that ferociousness when he's on the court. So yeah, Derek Walton Jr., like I said, I'm gonna throw him into the mix, but now you have Cameron Payne and Ryan Archie Diacono. Now, with Ryan Archie Diacono, I really like him, man. Uh, he's a nice, gritty player. Watching him in his past uh, summer league, you know, he actually, he actually played fairly well, if you ask me. His numbers weren't crazy or anything like that, but he's just one of those hard hat players. He's gonna go out there and put it all out on the floor. But, you know, I just feel like Archie doesn't have the skills to really live in the NBA. I don't see him having a long life in the NBA just because, you know, he's a little bit undersized at, a, at I believe, six feet, and he actually plays a little bit small too, but he actually is a really hard-nosed defender. I really liked when I saw him going against Trey Young in his past summer league as well. Like, he, he was actually getting up in him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, although Trey Young still, you know, he gave him the business a little bit, but he wasn't backing down. Ryan Archie Diacono is a gritty player. He can actually shoot the three, but when I watch him, he's very hesitant. You know what I mean? He he he. Uh, and that was at least last year during the season when he was playing. He would pass up open shots a lot of the times instead of you know 
taking him and showing what he can actually do out there on the floor. Now, he is a true point guard, and I get it. Like, he's passed first and all that, but at the same time, this is a very young Bulls team, and I feel like he should be trying to make a name for himself, especially if he really wants a shot at that backup point guard role. I don't know. I'm not super high on Ryan Archidiakono. Now, with Cameron Payne, Next when he did come back uh, last season, I believe it was after the All-Star break, he actually looked fairly good to me. I, I actually liked what I saw out of campaign in a few of those games. I don't have his stats right in front of me right now, but I believe he averaged around like 8.8 .8 points per game, and he was shooting about like 38% from the three-point line. And he had around like four and a half assists per game as well, you know what I mean? Around like one steal per game too. So campaign, he actually put up fairly decent stats because when you compare those to Fred Van Vliet's, it's actually like right on par with his, you know, the eight points per game, the four and a half assists per game. But I just think that Fred Van Vliet is just a more, more of an efficient player than campaign was. But campaign, all in all, he still did his thing when he did come back. So the only thing I would have to say about campaign is when I watch him on the court, I don't know, he, sometimes bro seems a little bit too laid back. You know what I'm saying? He's a little bit too laid back out there. And I would also like to see him uh, be a bit more gritty on defense. And that's probably the biggest thing that I would say about campaign. I think that his shooting stroke is pretty nice. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that he actually does uh, have pretty okay vision. He can definitely improve. But I think that offensively, campaign isn't necessarily a bad player. I think he actually has a life in the NBA on the offensive end, especially if he can do more of what he did, you know, on the uh, latter end of last season. But what would get campaign kicked out of the NBA is his lack of defense. Campaign definitely has to up that defensive rating and he has to like just put more effort in on that end of the floor but all in all out of those three backup point guards if i had to choose one my pick i would have to say i hope that it becomes Derek walton jr and i know he's gonna have to show up and show out in the training camp, I'm pretty sure he's going to have to do his thing in training camp. That's the only way that he's going to actually get a real contract with the Bulls. But I feel like, and I say that just because, like, I think he actually has the best tools from his shooting stroke to his vision and actually his, his just hard work out there on the floor. Like I said, he goes hard when he's out there and even on the defensive end, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't look like he's just laxed out there. He's actually trying to guard his men. So I think that the Bulls actually grab a pretty decent prospect in Derek Walton Jr. So hopefully he actually can turn out to be the best prospect for the Bulls at the backup point guard position. I'm actually rooting for him just because I think that he would benefit the team the most at the backup point guard position. You know, after him, probably campaign just because campaign is better than Ryan Archie Diakono if you ask me. But, <laughs> All right, I think that I've rambled on long enough, so your man is about to get out of here. That's pretty much all of the content that I have for you guys. So all of y'all, I thank y'all for listening. And as I said, the NBA season is coming up, so I'm going to ramp up the videos a lot, a lot more. And I'm just going to be thinking of, you know, more and more topics and everything like that to just discuss on this channel with you guys. So connect with me on social media, Twitter. You know, I'm at Radical underscore creator. Same with Instagram. I'm at Radical underscore creator. You guys connect with me, get to know me on a more personal level and all that. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and also guys, uh, get up with the podcast, man. Get up with the podcast. I'll put the link in the description over at Apple. Man, I'm basically about to get out of here. I hope y'all enjoyed the content today. I really enjoyed delivering it to you. But until we get up again, it's been real. It's your man, Wise Black. Holla.